Hello and welcome to another Arc Daily interview. Today we celebrate the launch of Her City, a platform that involves girls in urban development in order to make better cities for everyone. Turning the tables and putting girls in the expert position, this digital toolbox aims to create more inclusive, equal and sustainable cities and communities. The initiative makes methods and tools available to urban actors globally in order to support cities in integrating girls' participation in their long-term strategies. And to talk about it, I have here with me today part of the team behind this digital toolbox for inclusive urban planning. From New Anne Habitat, we have Chiara Martinezzi, architect and urban planner at the Global Public Space Program, and Krista Lahoud, program management officer. Hi, girls. Hi. And from the Swedish independent think tank Global Utmaning, we have with us Tove Julen, project manager. Hi, Tove. Hi. Hi. Thanks okay, for so. Us. These ladies were all responsible for coordinating the development of the platform. My name is Kisa Haru. I'm an architect, an urban designer, and a managing editor of Arc Daily, and I will be leading this panel today. So how is everyone doing? We're good. I'm very excited yeah. to have you here. <laughs> so let's just jump right into it, and let's talk about the team. So can you start introducing yourselves and tell us briefly about your contribution to the project? Tove, tell me. Yeah, uh, like you said, my name is Tove Lund and I work at the independent think tank The Wallet Money. Um, I was um, there in the beginning before we started the Her City Toolbox with another project called Urban Gas Movement that then grew and became the Her City Toolbox. Um, in this, during this period, I've been working with messaging a lot and also taking care of the stakeholder engagement parts of the toolbox, you could say. And the girls from the Unhabit that can you tell us about your contribution? Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll start. Kiara, you can talk. We can't hear you, Kiara. We can't hear you, Kiara. Kristel, can you tell us? Uh, yeah, maybe I'll just jump into it. So yeah, my name is Kristen. Uh, I work for New Habitat for the past five years, and I'm uh, one of the coordinating uh, people in the Her City project. I was part of setting up, uh, like I was part from, of the team that set up the project, uh, the initial team that met in Stockholm to define the project, its objective, uh, to outline the process and which digital tools uh, was needed to be included. So happy to be here. Kara, I really hope your mic works. <laughs> Do you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm Kiara again, as you said, and I also, I've been engaged in the um, Her City project since, uh, uh, since the collaboration with Global Mining has started. So after the pilot project in Sweden, and I'm, um, I also have a background in architecture and urban design. So I'm mostly supporting on the design components and uh, how to integrate the participatory part uh, into actual the into the actual process. Interesting. So, Tove, can you tell us a bit how did the project start and can you tell us the backstory of it? Yes, absolutely. We, we mentioned it a bit just now. The Her City is actually a result in some way from the Urban Girls movement that was launched in 2017 and. In 2017, we started with a global mapping of efficient methods and tools to contribute to increased in quality and inclusion in urban development. Um, so the ambition was really to highlight the values of increasingly involving women and girls in urban development processes. And the result from that mapping uh, was then implemented in the Swedish municipality of Bucheke. Uh, and that was called the Urban Girls Movement Bucheke. So there were tests the hypothesis, plan a city for girls and it will work for everyone. So after the Bucheka pilot, we wanted to share the methodology uh, with everyone. And we saw a, a need for, for digital tools um, to do this sharing. So we came together with UN Habitat and compiled the digital toolbox that is now her city. So now we're working on implementing it globally. So in a nutshell, you can say that it's global knowledge tested in a Swedish context and then shared again and globally. Interesting. Um, so I would like to ask Chiara, who are the main stakeholders uh, and actually who can benefit from this platform, from Her City? I think the idea behind uh, Her City is that uh, 
we are targeting everyone that actually wants to make a change and they want to see a change in their cities. So we are really focusing on uh, local governments, uh, but uh, but we actually also really want to uh, empower girls and uh, community members. So uh, from, let's say, the higher level of the stakeholders uh, up to the up to, up to the ground, let's say, and um, but also especially including professionals and all the urban actors that are related to urban planning and uh, urban design. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the block one, in in a way, it's uh, one of the first uh, one of the first uh, steps and uh, aims to select which are which are the stakeholders that are the more important for your context and helps to I identify. Uh, what are all the people that you should be uh, partnering with to to make uh, to make the best of it? And uh, as I said, like the primary group, the person, the the, pe the people that we actually focus the most is is the girls. So trying to involve those active and young uh, women and girls that really wants to uh, make an impact in their community. But then also, of course, uh, we need the support and the expertise of the professionals, the architects, the urban planners, and um, and the local governments and the public institutions that are are the facilitators of that. Basically, it takes a village. <laughs> <laughs> So Chiara and Christelle, both of you work, um, you, you are part of the Global Public Space Program and we've been covering your work for a while here on Arc Daily. Can you tell us from your experience of working with people, why is it important to have a platform like Her City? Like how would you evaluate, for example, the participation of women prior to this tool? Yeah, so uh, thanks Christelle. So we've been working for years to support local governments to mainstream gender and have effective participation in their cities. But what we often realize is that in many parts of the world, women and uh, girls are brought into the discussion only at certain phases of the, of the project. So they're not really part of the overarching city discussions. They're invited either to just like be uh, giving ideas at a certain moment or just saying their needs at, the, at another moment uh, or just be consulted in a way. So, uh, in some sort of way, they're considered as a passive participants rather than active participants. So this is wh wh where her city toolbox came to place to make them the lead, make them the expert uh, in this uh, process. The tables are turned, uh, they, they become more empowered, they're actively participating in shaping their future environment through the use of digital tools, which proven to be very much needed during the pandemic as well. Uh, they're not only expressing their needs, uh, you know, at a certain at a certain pilot projects, but they're having a discussion more at the city scale, you know, mm -hmm. also influencing strategies at the city scale. And this is how changes can can be seen when you start the discussion as well, not just on a pilot project, but you know, you upscale it to the city and you uh, you give them the opportunity to. Uh, you know, visualize their idea to express their uh, how to change their environment uh, and how to put their, um, you know, needs into into action. So they're becoming the urban planner and the architect at the end of the day through the Her City Toolbox. And this becomes like a mainstream thing, like all cities start integrating all these uh, girls like from the start and it's not something that they would have to do. It just becomes part of the whole uh, process, right? Exactly. Okay, so we know that although cities are supposed to be built for everyone, they are most of the time thought, planned, and designed by men. So Tove, how would you define an inclusive urban planning? And can you tell me a bit more how is uh, her city contributing to pushing forward these ideas of inclusivity? Yeah, I think that uh, Christelle really mentioned it in her answer before, because it's all about involving vulnerable groups in the process of urban planning, and not only thinking about the the built city and the built public space as an end product, but also involving vulnerable groups. Rather, it be women and young young women and uh, and girls that we're working with, or migrants, or people with disabilities, or whichever group. Um, these groups have to be able to define their own needs and implement it in the urban planning processes for a city to actually become inclusive. 
Maybe just to add, like, there's, I mean, there is no wrong way of having men designing cities, mm -hmm. as long as they include the, the right groups in the planning. Uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that uh, we're advocating only for female architects at the end of the day. That's not the issue. We want men to be part of the discussion. If men not, uh, are not on board, we're not going to have her city. Mm -hmm. This is the reality of many context, in many contexts around the world. So it's really the importance about the whole life, life cycle of the project and who's included and who's given the voice to actually transform those cities. Yeah, yeah. so it's more about diversity. And um, my question for you, Chiara, is if given the chances, obviously girls will plan and design with different needs in mind. And what do you think are the components or the ideas that we might notice more in a female design city? And do you think that there are some global concerns brought to the table by women from all around the, uh, the world? Yeah, uh, so I mean, we've been working in different contexts and uh, it's interesting to see that actually there are some uh, common grounds in the needs of the girls. Uh, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I mean, women all around the world experience the public space in a completely different way from a man because they have to uh, face uh, different challenges uh, that are um, not taken for granted. Uh, well, they are taken for granted for men, let's say, which is freedom of use, for instance, or, or safety or uh, representation. Like women don't feel uh, safe the most of the time uh, uh, to walk around the city in, in the night or in certain areas of the public space. Uh, or they don't feel like uh, free uh, to use the public space or spend uh, the time they want to spend uh, in a public space because there are certain uh, silent rules uh, or invisible rules that are not supposed to be there. But like uh, what it's interesting of the women mind that somehow it's not only, it's a person, he's an individual, it's an adult, but it's also a worker, is also a mother, is also uh, a friend. So they, she, she really, I think, has a, a comprehensive way of what are the needs of a girl, and uh, but not only a girl. Uh, so she thinks about uh, what's, what's light, she thinks about lightning, she thinks about having a, a safe space, space to, uh, that can see their children running. She sees, uh, she needs uh, ramps uh, to, access, to increase accessibility for children and strollers, but uh, therefore it becomes also accessibility for wheelchairs uh, users. And uh, she needs uh, toilets, public toilets, because uh, I mean, we are women and uh, as, as women we need it the most, but uh, finally it's a basic need for everybody. And um, yeah. And then uh, she needs to to enjoy the the public life as well. So she wants to meet the friends in a nice place, and uh, with uh, with some greenery that uh, provides shade and um, so on and so forth. I mean, there are so many little aspects that uh, women. I think women are really able to uh, capture uh, what are the basic needs that finally reflect to the basic needs of the old society. True, and just like you said, with basic different needs, men and women expect different outcomes from their urban surroundings. Going yeah. back to the platform right now, so um, from what I've seen, the process seems pretty simple. Can you walk us through the, the different phases? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the toolbox is built with nine very flexible blocks and they're divided into three phases. So first you have the assessment phase where you start with the stakeholder mapping that Christelle mentioned earlier, uh, just to make sure that all the right people are invited to partake in the process and both stakeholders and target groups. And then you continue with a citywide assessment and a site specific public assessment. So you locate the public space that you will work in uh, and that is in most need of action. And then in phase two, we have the design phase. And that's where you analyze the challenges uh, detected during the assessment phase. So you design solutions for the public space. Um, and this is where you find the block by block Minecraft workshop, um, for instance, and other design thinking tools such as method kit, just to mention one. And uh, you also prioritize among these ideas and formulate recommendations for action. Um, and this is all done together with the stakeholders and, and the girls. Uh, and the third phase is implementation. So you work with um, with action plans and implementation of the solutions. You start construction and you also share results uh, with the community at large. 
And then after six months or so, uh, you also do a follow up and evaluation of the process. So that's it. <laughs> Pretty simple, I would say. <laughs> quite simple. Yeah. yeah. Nine blocks. Very. Yeah. We try to think of everything. So it's quite comprehensive, even though it's um, very like clear what to do. And who can actually access uh, this toolbox and uh, who should lead the process, I would ask. So uh, you have uh, the, the, the website is pretty straightforward. So you have a general overview of the entire process. Then you have a registry uh, option where you can create your own account, whether you are a, the project team who's leading, mm -hmm. like who's facilitating the whole process, you would create the, her city, let's say Nairobi or her city Beirut or her city Johannesburg. And then you would invite also the girls to be, uh, to, to register as well and log in in order to put their data or their uh, information throughout the life cycle of the, uh, of the process. So uh, it's pretty much open for everyone. We do support in some cases, some cities that wanna collaborate directly with us. But again, it is a free of use. Uh, it is open uh, source. So anyone could log in, anyone can start your city today, basically. Interesting to know that it's an open source. And uh, what are the cities that are already on the platform and uh, how has been the experience so far? Um, so let's say that the idea of the project in general right now is to uh, implement the platform and try like pilot it uh, in three different cities. And uh, right now we have on board uh, the Johannesburg municipality and uh, Beirut and uh, Flemingsbury in uh, uh, Sweden. And then uh, a few cities in Palestine that are also uh, trying out uh, the toolbox, the different tools, and see how it uh, how it's working. And after after this uh, after this phase, we will uh, review the toolbox and see how how what to change and how to make it better and better. But again, I want to just echo the idea that um, the um, the platform is free and open source, so everybody can just log in and start their her city now and um, make uh, incre increase the participation of uh, girls and young women in, in any urban planning process. So it's quite, uh, yeah, this is quite uh, interesting for us as well. And um, yeah, and uh, the idea is also that uh, later on we will have some uh, regional uh, uh, training so that uh, we can also try to uh, tailor even better the, the the service that we are providing uh, for different contexts and different needs. So finally, what are the main SDGs at stake here and how does this open platform contribute to the 2030 agenda? Yeah, so there's uh, many SDGs that we are contributing to uh, by doing the Her City process. The overarching one would be the SDG 11 on mm -hmm. sustainable cities and communities, especially the target seven, which is providing accessible, safe, inclusive, and green public spaces for everyone, in particular women and children. Uh, there's SDG 5 on gender equality, so making sure all groups are included in the discussion and shaping their cities. There's the SDG uh, 3 on health and well-being by providing more clean and safe spaces that are enjoyable by everyone. Uh, not to mention also SDG 10, reducing inequality. So we're providing more op equal opportunities uh, to access different basic services at the city level. And finally, SDG 7 on partnerships through the Her City project, we, uh, we're like uh, forming partnership and discussions between different uh, entities at the different level of the city. So with strong partnership, we strengthen means of implementation and maintenance, but more importantly, we ensure upscaling. Uh, so in a mm. nutshell, those are like the main ones, but at the local level, it's also contributing to a wider, um, uh, wider contribution. Yeah. Like, or you already named like a bunch of uh, SDG, SDGs, if not like most of them. So I think this open platform is a great uh, contribution to cities uh, worldwide. Uh, Chiara, Tove, and uh, Christelle, thank you for sharing your thoughts and for explaining to us more about the Her City platform. Any last uh, words you want to, to share with our audience? No, we welcome everyone to start their Her City today. They have the link in the article, of course. Everyone can log in and uh, start using Her City. It's uh, pretty simple. I tried it and um, um, 
it's very visually also interesting, I would say. Thank you, Crystal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Thank thanks you for guys. having us. <laughs> thank you, girls. It was a pleasure having you and talking with you.